So yeah, in the last video I mentioned how uh, I was living in Mosoro, and that city was kind of like, it was rainy when I was there, but it was like sort of like a semi-desert, and the dirt was red. So anyway, I was leaving there, and that was Rio Grande do Norte, that state there, and then I crossed over into Ceara, and I'd been warned sort of by a few people, like, be careful in Ceara, because there had been skirmishes between sort of like local mafias, head gangs, and the government over the course of that time, prior to me arriving. And I was like, well, it'll be in the big cities, it'll be certain neighborhoods, probably won't affect me, and I wasn't too worried about it. So I headed into Ceara, and my first city was Fortaleza, and when I got there, uh, it was pretty rainy, um, so I decided to just chill out the first day at the hotel, just go out for dinner that night, whatever, wander around the neighborhood, but not really check out Fortaleza. I planned to do that the next day, and I was hoping it would be sunny, and it turned out to be. Actually, the guy, I was saying that Ceara was sort of this kind of battle between the police and like the gangs or whatever during that time. The guy who actually owned the hotel was this like ex-cop or maybe he was a cop on vacation or something like that. But uh, he was also like super hardcore Christian. So as I've been mentioning in Brazil, uh, it's not really like Argentina. It's almost like this like religious uh, evangelical style of uh, of like super expressiveness or whatever. So he, always, he tried to talk to me quite a bit about like what are your beliefs or whatever. Like not converting me, but he was a super nice guy, but it was sort of an interesting thing. Um, so anyway, so like I said, the first day just chilled at the hotel, and the next day decided to do like a super long walk to kind of check out the city, and fortunately it was like gorgeous blue sky weather, really hot, and uh, en route like to downtown, saw like a few churches, museums, things like that. Um, my main, well, downtown there's like real, real sort of historic district in Fortaleza, so I'll just put up some pictures of that and whatnot. There's this like amazing, amazing church that uh, that's down there too, it's like a big basilica type building. Um, like I had seen in Argentina. And um, also on top of that, there was like this arts district, Drago del Mar or something. So I went down there, that was kind of interesting. And I made, made my way to the beach as well, like Future Beach or Praia do Futuro or Lago Si, something like this. Um, and, uh, and that was actually my last time swimming in the ocean before I made it all the way back up to shipping my car. Um, and I'll tell you about that later on. But anyway, so that was last time swimming in the ocean for a long, long period of time. Um, and then on the way back, I, uh, again, went to, like, a museum, some type of, like, Afro-Brazilian museum with some really dark, weird, like, art or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. I was super impressed with Fortaleza. Like, it was just, like, a gorgeous day. Blue skies, could swim in the ocean, it was nice and warm. And, like, a lot of history in the buildings. And, yeah, I just, I really, really dug my time there. So that was cool. But then from Fortaleza, I had to make my way to Parque Nacional Lensois with those sand dunes with the lakes in the middle, that was sort of like my big goal, that was like the final destination uh, before, you know, switching to get the car home mode, uh, but before I could get to Parque Nacional Lensois, I had to stop in one other city, and I chose Tiangua, which is also in Ceara, near the border with Piaui, but uh, it, had, it was weird because I, I left Fort Leza late because of my day tour, and so I ended up driving some of it at night, and it took longer to get to Tiangua than I imagined. And to get to the actual city, Tiangua, it's high, like it's 775 meters, which is nothing. It's basically like the height of Mount Dufferin or something like that. That's the city. But I guess because we're coming from sort of like the jungle floor, and it's very green and whatnot, uh, and it was night, the road's skinny and it was winding to get up the hill. And so I was behind rigs, and they're going like literally like 15 kilometers an hour, and you can't pass because there's too many turns. It's night, you might crash into somebody. So it was like really slow drive to get up there. And actually, when we got to the top, it was like foggy. So I had this like feeling of being like Peru, but in Brazil. I mean, 775 meters is not Peru. It's not the Andes. It's nothing even close to that. But because of the fog and arriving at night and just like it being a bit kind of cold up there, um, it definitely had like a completely different feeling than the rest of Brazil for me. That city was pretty basic. It was like super small, almost like a truck stop kind of city. So yeah, my hotel was great. I mean, it was fine, but uh, not much going on. Not a lot of street lights. So it had again that like dark kind of mountain vibe to it. But I managed to get my food, everything was fine. And then I uh, got out of there the next day heading to Parque Nacional Lensois. And like, I had researched the route to Lensois before going on the trip because I was like, I wonder if I can get there. Because in the north of Brazil, a lot of times the roads turn to dirt and I know my car won't be able to handle that in Brazil. So I was like, oh yeah, it's paved to Lensois. And I had done my research in like October or November of 2018. But the day before going to Lensois, like in Tiangua, I looked at the route and I realized that the final 38 kilometers of the, the road to get to the city, Barrier Inhas, which is where Lensois is, the final 38 kilometers had only been paved on January 15th of 2019. And this was like February 9th. So I was just like, 
oh my god, I got super lucky there. Um, so, anyway, so I was driving to Lensois, and um, on route you can see the beginnings. There's some mini dunes that are beside the road, so I probably got some video of that. But, like, arriving to the actual city in Lensois, it was, like, super, like, Dominical in Costa Rica. Like, like little tourist companies, guys, like, literally coming up to your car as you're pulling into town. Hey, here's a, here's a flyer, here's something, come visit, because everyone wants to do this tour out to, to go see the sand dunes. So, it was, like, this little tiny town, not yet into its full tourist bloom, where everything's, like, paved and everything like that. Um, and super aggressive, like, tourist companies. So, I'd already had my hotel set up, so I went there, and they were linked in with the tourist company. And I remember going to talk to the tourist company. So my vision for Lensois was like, dude, I just want to walk out with my tent and camp out there at night, wander around the next day, and then come back. But the distance between Barrier Inhas and Lensois is like more than 11 kilometers just through the sand. It's like a maze. Like, it's like, in retrospect, I would have gotten lost for sure. And you need to cross a river. So, like, I was like, maybe thought I could negotiate with the river crossing guys, just me without a tourist company to go. But then, like, after I started talking to different people, it was like, no, like, this is not possible. So I just had to sign for the tour company. It was, it was cheap, and the guys were, of course, like, the young, like, party kind of vibe. Because they're, like, in their, like, teens and 20s, the guys who give the tours, whatever, right? Very much like Dominical um, in Costa Rica. That surf culture, scuba culture. But obviously not surfing or scuba here. Um, so anyway, so the next day we head out, and we cross the river on this, like, barge ferry thing. And it actually really got me worried, because later on in the trip, further over in Brazil in the west, I knew I'd have to cross the river on a ferry um, with my car. I was super stressed because the ferries down there are not super professional. Um, so this ferry was okay. Obviously, I was with the company vehicle and it was my own vehicle. But on the other side, there was a private vehicle that was trying to get onto the ferry. And it was, like, super sketch. Like, the ferry couldn't go in close enough, like, so that it was land to ferry. It was, like, there was a water gap. And it was, like, all, like, uneven. And the car had to take, like, three attempts and, like, this super fast run that was, like, I was, like, dude, like, I would have never done that with my car. Like, it would like, destroyed it. Um, so I was pretty sketched on that for, like, the future. But obviously in the situation with Lens, so it's no big deal. i with, like, a tour company. So the, the actual road, as I was saying, from the river to the sand dunes was, like, 11K through sand and mud and all these, like, little pond things. So it was actually super fun in the 4x4 vehicle because, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure in Canada we have a lot of dudes doing that here, too, but for me it's not something I typically do. So it was, like, super fun just, like, bouncing around in this thing uh, through the mud and the sand and everything to get there. And then we finally get there, and it was just, like, so, like, mind-blowing. Like, I was just like, oh, my God, you know, like, an endless sea of, like, sand and dunes, just rolling hills of sand, these, like, little lakes in the middle. It, like, yeah, man, it was, like, everything I want. I was just like, this is the greatest. And so, like, I was with this, like, tour guy, guy, young guy, and some other tourists, and uh, we got to a park by a lake uh, for people to go, like, swimming in the water, because you can go swimming in the water in these things. Um, and, uh, and I was like, yo, man, like, is it cool if I just go for a run? Like, I explained, like, I'm a runner, and I, like, absolutely love running on sand dunes. So I just, like, barefoot, my soccer shorts, just running. I probably only ran for, like, 10, 15 minutes because it was, like, exhausting. But it was, like, the other amazing thing was the sand wasn't hot, despite the sun, because I guess because the sand is, like, so white, and because there's wind coming through, it's like you don't roast your feet. It was weird. I was very surprised. I had to ask the tour guide why it was that way. But, like, I ran for, like, maybe 10 minutes up and down these hills. I was just, ah, oh, so good. And then, like, came back to the pond, like, went swimming. And uh, and then we went to a few different ponds when swimming. It was it was just like, I mean, yeah. I can't like even. It was the best. It was the best. Um, I would have loved to have camped over like under the stars, but uh, in retrospect, I probably could have worked it out. So the tour tour company would have brought me out. I would have camped out, and the next day they would have picked me up and brought me back when they brought out the next group. But it would have been a lot to plan. So anyway, so I, I came back to the city. Uh, I got my car and I had started heading south, and that was sort of like the end of the vacation mode of the trip. Uh, that signaled actually one month in Brazil, February 10th, that had been one month that had been in Brazil at that point. So now I'm heading south from Lensois to a place called Santa Rita. And nothing re really remarkable about that drive. Although it was sunny in Lensois, it had become like sort of cloudy on the way down. The only thing was there was this little city, Rosario, which is a city in Argentina, big city in Argentina as well, the one that Messi's from. Actually, he was born there. But this little village, Rosario, the only thing was, it was kind of weird because it had like this weird like brick structure to it. And I kind of got lost there, like these roundabouts going over train tracks and stuff. So it just had like a weird vibe. But anyway, I managed to get through all the way down to Santa Rita where my hotel was. And that was just like a one strip town. So basically, like, check into the hotel. That was a super nice hotel, actually. And there was like a little church across from my hotel. 
and then I went out to get dinner, uh, and it was like a communal dinner, like it was like you pay, and you can take seconds and thirds, and it was like just open tables and like people, and it was actually delicious and super good, so that was cool to kind of just be like super local there, um, not in like a restaurant for tourists, but just like all the locals, like with their like weekend, like sort of like dinner thing, communal. Um, then back to the hotel and to bed, and then from there uh, headed down to Kalinas, which is still in Maranao, the Maranao province, and that's what has Lensois. Um, and so heading down to Kalinas, and that day was gorgeous. And then you know it's very jungly, the route you feel like green, but you can also start to see like these sort of like red dirt hills. Like there's one in this video here that you can kind of see. The other thing coming to Kalinas, I don't know so much about exercise. Like I mentioned before, people running beside the highway, but that's coming into the valley in Kalinas. You can see people walking at least along the highway, maybe some jogging or whatever as well. So that's sort of like the exercise after the day of work thing in Brazil that people tend to do. Uh, in smaller towns, there's not really a facility to do it, so they just do it literally along the highway or the main street. So anyway, so I get to Kalinas, and it's like a gorgeous, sunny place, uh, warm. There's like this cool little plaza in the center with like a church. And then I get to my hotel, and uh, first they couldn't check me in because they didn't have the reservation or something. So I hang out with this little kid who is like the son of the people who own the hotel. And he's like showing me his little Sony PlayStation thing and like speaking Portuguese. I'm like, okay, okay, finally I get to my room. It was cool hanging out with them. Finally I get to my room and it's like on the river. There's a video of like sort of at night, I guess, on the river. And then went out and got some food and just kind of wandered around. And uh, yeah, it was a super cool little small town vibe. And uh, yeah, that was sort of the beginning phase of me heading south and then heading over to Peru.